Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's do a FAQ video on this Asus ROG Phone 5. And guys, I'm sorry for being a little bit late. Uh, you guys had asked me some questions on which I didn't have an answer. So I approached Asus India. So that's why some delay. But let's get on with this uh, same. And uh, I have answered a bunch of questions, about 18 of them. So let's uh, get on with the same. And the first question that I got from Jai Kishan is that, how's the output from the headphone jack? If you recall, guys with the asus rog phone 3 there was never the 4 directly we jumped to the 5 uh, now we uh, get back this headphone jack and i have to say the headphone jack output is actually really really good on this one in fact the speakers are also very very good so no issues regarding that and i'm glad that they brought back the headphone jack i personally like it anyways let's move to the next one and this i've got multiple questions from multiple users regarding this thing uh, this is why prane uh, and uh, rajat also asked a similar how fast is the phone and the overall experience prane says the snapdragon 888 chip is there in a lot of phones all of them will perform well with the multitasking and heavy games will this device be a notch higher in performance or it's just the name sake people will buy this a very genuine question guys because you're seeing a lot of smartphones now with the snapdragon 888 chipset and yes this phone is very fast and most of the modern smartphones that we are getting in the market are actually really really fast so to answer this question what i did is actually i installed antutu on a bunch of high-end smartphones that i have uh, for example i also have this is this a one plus eight uh, one plus nine pro which also has the snapdragon 888 so i installed antutu on all of them and last year's flagship also i have this is the galaxy fold 2 which comes with the snapdragon 865 so i'll run antutu on them to get a baseline idea how is the performance for example if i run this on this one let's also open it on uh, this one here as you can see uh, on the snapdragon 865 with the fold 2 we got a score of 6 lakhs 86 thousand very respectable but on the oneplus 9 pro which has the new snapdragon uh, 888 chipset we see a significant boost that is 7 lakh 35 thousand and uh, in fact here uh, on the rog if i ra ran the same thing i ran it just earlier guys my main sum is here here we got a score of seven lakh ninety six thousand seven hundred eighteen so the highest on this one so significantly yes this is faster and if we even compare with the what do you say snapdragon 888 uh, other chipsets as you can see this is significantly faster and i did a little bit of digging why this big difference is there because this one also has the snapdragon 888 that's the oneplus 9 pro uh, and uh, this one also has that but this is definitely getting a higher score as you can see on uh, this one so actually uh, i was a little bit perplexed why is this happening and i think so the rog phone uh, has actually better cooling and i asked uh, asus officials what about the cooling on uh, this one in fact they sent me this uh, screenshot uh, regarding the cooling layers on this one as you can see uh, it has 3d vapor cooling apart from that it also has two graphite sheets and um, there in the middle we have the cpu so definitely i feel uh, though both these phones are running on the snapdragon 888 uh, we got a significantly higher score uh, with the rog phone 2 so definitely yes it's I would say one of the fastest Android smartphones as you can uh, see. Okay, let's move to the next one. Let me just put these phones to the side. And uh, guys, you can, uh, in fact, download uh, Antutu uh, directly uh, from the Antutu website. It's not available on a Play Store, but you can go to the Antutu website and download it and run. Anyways, let's move to the next one. This is by Anirudh Satish is saying, does it have the black crush or the color issue like the earlier ROG Phone 3 from last year? Uh, and how is the screen quality? Uh, yes, I was also worried about that guys and the first thing when i got this phone is i tested the screen on this one and i opened a lot of netflix videos and went to the lowest brightness setting that was the problem with the rog phone 3 when he was keeping it in very low brightness setting in the black areas there was that black crush issue uh, fortunately that's not the case on this one and i tested this one quite a bit uh, in fact i tested it on various uh, what do you say screen uh, refresh rates also on this one if you see refresh rate you can set to 144 120 60 and auto i'm mostly using an auto but i tested it both on 114 uh, and 120 hertz also and i did not find that issue of black crash and uh, asus guys told me that this is actually a very good uh, new panel it's a custom panel that is built by samsung for this specific uh, smartphone and i think so they have now 
solve that black crush issue which was an issue in the earlier ROG phone so no issues and even at night completely uh, what do you say dark uh, no, no lights at night I was watching some uh, what do you say Netflix videos and I didn't get that black crush issue so I think so that's now completely finally solved anyways let's move to the next uh, one this is a how's the overall experience is better than one ui uh, i would say yes and many of you have asked me about the user interface on this one and guys if you notice uh, this one is actually very very close to stock android uh, unlike custom ui and if you go you get the app train the only uh, difference that i've seen is that it's this one has that armory crate stuff because again it's a gaming centric smartphone and some minor uh, what do you say changes in the battery setting apart from this this is very very close to stock android experience uh one samsung one ui is also good it's a little bit different so it comes down to what do you say your personal preference uh if you always like the stock android you will prefer this and i like it's very clean layout uh, no ads or anything no ads whatsoever on this smartphone so i'm happy with the ui guys uh, anyways let's move to the next one this is like abhilash he's saying please specifically mention about Wi-Fi calling on Airtel. Asus has been successfully ignoring on their previous ROG variants. Hope uh, they don't miss it on this one. Uh, yes, I did uh, check. For example, right now also my Airtel SIM is on this one and it does have uh, what do you say Wi-Fi calling but by default it's not enabled. You have to go in the settings and actually enable uh, and I have enabled uh, that one and uh, if I search for Wi-Fi calling it will be there somewhere. Call and uh, Wi-Fi calling here you have to enable it and Wi-Fi calling is definitely there and uh, let me actually show you a screenshot I had uh, saved here and as you can see when Wi-Fi calling is working here underneath the Wi-Fi icon you get this calling icon and I also got it uh, earlier uh, but uh, at this specific location uh, though I'm on Wi-Fi I'm not getting that and I was very uh, perplexed why is this happening and this guys where I'm shooting this is a remote area this is not in the center part of the you would say outskirts of the city and I asked Asus official why is this when I was testing this one in my office as you saw that earlier screenshot I'm getting that Wi-Fi calling thing they told that Wi-Fi calling is definitely enabled on this one on Airtel as well as Geo but the thing is that Airtel in some remote areas some towers they haven't enabled Wi-Fi calling if they haven't you won't get that icon so yes technically Wi-Fi calling is working and it works perfectly in my office with which is in the main part of the city i'm getting that but in this remote location i'm not getting it so wi-fi calling is there uh, this is by naga he's asking uh, you said x1 cores of the snapdragon 888 were heating up on the oneplus 9 pro did you experience such severe heating on the asus rog fine uh, i would say in regular usage uh, it just gets slightly warm uh, it does not get as warm as the oneplus 9 pro the oneplus 9 pro with similar usage not gaming just regular usage definitely gets a lot more warmer i would say compared to this one and i think so as this one has that better cooling multiple vapor uh, chambers and all those things as i've showed you that screenshot this one does not heat up that much yes with gaming when i was doing continuous gaming with call of duty for more than 30 minutes i played yes it gets slightly warm at the back but that's normal so i would say yes it does get warm quite a bit uh, when you're stressing or uh, gaming but it does not get as hot as what I've seen on the OnePlus 9. For example, this gets almost as hot as my, what do you say, Galaxy Fold 2 when I'm doing the uh, gaming stuff. So yes, it will get warm while gaming, but it's not like I was not able to do the gaming and stuff. And the thing is the, the, uh, that in the middle, the CPU is actually here in the middle, guys. So when you're gaming, these two areas actually do not get that hot in most of the smartphones the main chipset is here that's why they get very very hot and i think so that's the reason the oneplus uh, 9 pro this area gets very very hot because the chipset is here what they have done is here actual chipset here is here in the middle and the batteries are here so when you're holding it like this it does not feel that hot and as you saw with the benchmarks also uh, this can go higher because it's simply that it's not heating as much as some other uh, smartphones with the Snapdragon 888. And that shows in the benchmark results. Anyways, let's move to the next one. Uh, this is by uh, Sadhu. He's asking, does it make sense to buy it for everyday use? That's uh, for really snappy and fluid performance, social media, multitasking, occasional photography, as this is a price to value phone compared to other smartphones uh, in the market. Uh, yes, uh, I would say yes. 
uh, this is a very practical phone if you are not even a gamer guys i'm not a hardcore gamer uh, you guys know that and mostly i was using this phone as my regular smartphone and in that aspect also it is a very good phone in fact i would say uh, it gets some of the things really really right for example this one does have a physical led notification light that 3.5 mm headphone jack and because of that battery that is that 6000 milliamp hour battery in a one day i was not able to kill this smartphone that was not, not the case with the oneplus 9 pro at the end of the day i would have to put this on charge because the battery life on this one was not that great. that is not the uh, case with this one so i would say if you are not even a gamer but you are looking for a powerful phone with great battery life uh, great stereo speakers and etc you can definitely have a look uh, i just played uh, games because i just wanted to test it i mostly use it as a normal smartphone so if you are okay with the size and the weight you can definitely go with it and yes it's a very very powerful smartphone anyways let's move to the next one and again the similar question non-gamer same answer yes you can go uh, I would say uh, if you're a non-gamer also the only thing that is missing on this one as it's a gaming centric smartphone it does not have IP protection apart from that I did not find any compromise as a flagship I would say cameras also some of you have asked me here are some of the samples that I took I didn't uh, think that the camera didn't pay that much attention but as you can see with the shots that I took the camera is also actually pretty decent I won't say it's the best camera out there like the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra or stuff but for regular stuff I would say the camera was also pretty decent and the results that I got uh, with both the front facing and the rear facing were pretty decent Anyways, let's move to the next and uh, this is by Gyan. Uh, he is uh, saying, though the top notch gives better grip while gaming, did you find it a deal breaker since you're used to uh, subtle notches these days? Yes. If you notice over here, we have a space over given over here and top and the bottom so that it's a gaming phone so you can hold it. Um, and it did bother me. In fact, I would say because of this space, the speakers on this one are actually really really good it's a proper front firing speaker that you're getting and in fact it can go very very loud to give you an idea let me just uh, fire up this uh, what do you say v and i'm going to increase the volume guys see how loud it goes see how loud it is actually it goes crazy loud So very, very loud, in fact, I would say. So that way, I would say one of the loudest stereo speakers that I've seen and stuff. Yes, it's slightly a bigger chin that it has. But again, you have that physical LED notification light and, and you get sort of used to the same. Anyways, let's move to the next one. This is by uh, Mr. Roy. He's asking, how is the UI compared to One UI and Oxygen uh, OS? Which one do you prefer? I've already answered this and I would say this is more closer to a stock Android pure experience. OnePlus was like that, but now OnePlus has changed the UI elements a little bit. Uh, it's not pure closer to stock because they have changed the layout, I would say. But this, if you look at it, uh, this one is more close to pure stock Android. I'm using the black theme on both. But uh, yeah, it comes down to personal difference. Definitely, this feels more close to stock Android experience. While well, this, uh, the, what do you say, Oxygen OS is also good. But they have changed it, uh, things a little bit, I would say. Both are actually pretty good UIs in my frank opinion. Uh, this is by Ashwin. Uh, how is the in-hand feel? Is it bulky? And what are your thoughts about the device? Yes, it's a big device, guys. And uh, it's on the heavier side because it has that 6,000 milliamp hour battery, dedicated big chambers for that speaker, as you saw how loud it gets. So yes, it's uh, heavy. I, I recall this is about 239 grams. So yes, it's definitely a, what do you say, heavy device. But uh, you tend to get used to the same. Uh, so if you're okay with that, you'll really like it. In fact, I would say, I don't know if it's available. I think so. It will be also on demo on ASUS stores and stuff. If you can get time, uh, go there, check it out in the hand, play around with it for five minutes and see if it's comfortable for you or not. Uh, next question is from uh, Kavilash. Uh, he's asking, what about hearing and software updates from the 
for this uh, smartphone uh, about heating as i've already told you it has multiple heat sinks yes if you're running the benchmarks continuously and doing very heavy gaming yes it will get warm but regular usage it was fine and uh, compared to the oneplus 9 pro yes this was heating a little bit less that's why you saw that benchmark results and regarding the updates i didn't have a answer to this so i actually emailed the asus india team and i got a reply they are, as of now they said it's running on android 11 that's the latest and this will also get the android 12 update and they also said that regarding android security updates uh, this phone will get android security updates once every two months i hope that info helps anyways uh, let's move to the next one this is by roy how are the haptics the haptics are actually really good on this smartphone and within the ui also they have enabled the haptics which gives a good uh, experience and you can tweak uh, the haptics also a little bit and i like actually the haptics on this one uh, so they have done very well even when you type and stuff uh, it uh, has pretty good uh, uh, actually uh, vibration intensity as you can see you can actually adjust the uh, touch feedback and stuff so the haptics are actually good pretty good and strong they have done in a good way i would say uh, this is by mr gupta he's asking sir uh, would you uh, what would be uh, your experience for normal youth using the phone except weight and no gaming is it even possible because i think it's a bank for buck yes as i've told you even if you don't do gaming and your highest concern is battery life uh, and you want very good speakers and overall very fast more phone for multitasking if you're sort of a heavy user not a gamer then also you can get used to this phone i got used to this phone uh, after a couple of days and i have to stress the battery life is amazing on this one even at the end of the day full day for example i generally take out my phones from the charger morning 7 30 to 8 o'clock and even at night around 11 30 when i go to bed this smartphone was always hovering around 44 to about 50 percent so in terms of battery life also it's very good this is one of those flagship smartphones where you simply just use the phone and you don't have to worry about the battery anyways let's move to the next one and again for multimedia because of the speakers how loud they are uh, you get a very good experience and uh, the big difference i would say from other stereo speakers is that many phones have stereo speakers you get a little bit of bass that is depth which is sort of missing in many phones here you get that so the stereo speakers implementation is also done very well on this one and uh, this is by uh, Sharma and uh, before that uh, some of you actually have asked me also about 5G on this uh, variant that is sold in India because I didn't mention about that one in the unboxing video uh, yes this has 5G supports and uh, here as you can see with this screenshot that top uh, uh, line shows the 5G bands and this one actually has uh, 11 bands of 5G so that way they have done a very good job for example the OnePlus 9 Pro supports only two bands of 5G in India so that's regarding the 5g and i think so yeah we have one more question so let me just answer that and we are almost done yeah, okay uh, okay some of you have also asked about the fingerprint scanner yes it has that in display fingerprint scanner and as you can see this works very well and uh, you also have this uh, uh, always on display option on this one and uh, Yes, the in-display fingerprint scanner is actually a fast one on this and very reliable. I did not have an issue. And uh, this is by uh, Mr. K Sitanshu. He's asking, how is the earpiece quality and stereo speaker effect? How is the battery life? Uh, the earpiece is very good, guys. Uh, and I tested uh, this uh, smartphone with my Airtel and GeoSim in Hyderabad. No issues regarding the earpiece. It's actually really loud, uh, the earpiece quality. So uh, no issues with that. And battery life, as I've already told you, is excellent. And speakers, very, very loud, as you have heard. So this will be the last question and this is by Shari. Is one thing I like about the uh, Asus uh, uh, ROG 5 is that it doesn't skimp on features like physical LED notification light, headphone jack. Yes, I appreciate that. The physical LED notification light is there. Yes, it always ha also has this always on display, uh, but you have that. And even, yes, I like the fact that they brought back the 3.5mm headphone jack. I think so. this is one of the uh, only or in the remote category Android phone once they removed a feature like 3.5mm headphone jack and users complained they brought it back so i'm glad 
that they did that so guys uh, these were the faq questions that i was getting regarding this rog phone 5 i'll also be posting its full uh, review with the, the pros and cons in the next couple of days so stay tuned to my channel and guys if i missed any particular question do let me know in the comment section below and i'll try to include that one in my review anyways guys that's it for now thanks for watching and if you guys are still not subscribed to the youtube channel hit that subscribe button anyways guys take care catch you later